we have obviously seen that um, the COVID vaccination, which is not a traditional vaccine, um, required more than one, two, three boosters. So that kept on going. That was that's definitely more money in the bank. But the financial system and the the farm, the big pharma, are connected in this in this regard. Um, the financial system, I believe, the financial system needed a lockdown, needed a complete stop of um, uh, of of spending. I mean, it just had to stop and sit in your place because uh, they. We never really fixed what happened in two thousand nine. That was all shoved under the under the under the rug, and we just took interest rates down to almost zero. Free money, and that that stimulated everything. We got free money for everything. Free money for every company, every DoorDash, you know, every Silicon Valley, you know, thing. Um, you don't have to make profit. We'll, we'll just raise more money. Keep going. Keep going, until if you look at what something called the reverse repo market, it's a banking thing, spiked uh, just like it did just before the Great Recession, the housing, uh, the housing bust. That's right then is when, uh-oh, we got a lockdown, we've got a pandemic. And I would argue that seeing as, you know, this recent bug that people have that's going around, which is not COVID, it's not flu, whatever it is. RSV? Um, no, 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 it's, it's, un, it's unidentified. No, I don't think anyone cares anymore, although it seems to be pretty bad. Um, the it was the media that really freaked everybody out. We got you know we had death counts on the screen, all this yeah. stuff going on and on and on, and everyone stayed home, and that allowed everything to calm down, allowed the financial markets to do some some shuffling back and forth, and then we did, of course, what they needed to do is create a whole bunch of extra money, and get that out there, which of course is what caused inflation, and this is going to be here for a while. Um, and so those two are linked, whether purposefully or not. Um, the the lockdown and the pandemic and the fear and the destruction of companies and jobs, et cetera, was beneficial to the financial system. And now I think they're just out of control. You know, I think it's some like forty percent of all dollars ever created, which you know they're printed basically on a computer. Um, were made in the last three years. What? So since since the dollar what? started, yes. <laughs> no way. Jamie, look it up. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, forty percent. Oh my God, I can't handle this. Yeah, and that went to um, yeah, you can, and that went to um, you know, all, you know, a lot of people got really rich. You know, if you look at Lake Austin, um, after the pandemic, everybody upgraded their toys. There was new speedboats. Everyone had new. Sh everyone who had money just made more and just did incredibly well. So here it is. It was November twenty-one. There is it go. a big deal that forty percent <laughs> of U.S. dollars was printed in the last twelve months? <laughs> no, it's not. Well, thank you. What is this guy's name? <laughs> it's not. All right. How do you say that guy's name? I don't know him. I don't know him. But but, but how do you say his name? So he. So he, Miglani. Okay, please read first. I received a high amount of negative comments and emails telling me that inflation is real and my article is wrong. Please note that nowhere in my article do I say that inflation doesn't exist. It is real and it is happening. The goal of the article was to separate the current economic conditions from the impact of the 40% printing statistics and the fact that they are not related in the way most politicians would communicate. I'm sure if you read enough articles, seen enough TikToks and tweets about this statistic, it sounds like a scary fact, and mostly it's been used by polarizing <laughs> figures on social. You polarize, I'm polarizing. You are a polarizing. <laughs> I'm a polarizer, figure. brother. On social media to drive hysteria and scare people, sure, or uh, f or for polarizing the public against their political opponent. But what does this figure mean? Uh, even mean and is it really that big of a deal the simple answer is no it's not a big deal the explanation is slightly complicated and informed by socioeconomics well I can tell you what this leads to this is MMT or modern monetary theory and this is something that the economists are all in on and the idea is like Japan you can just keep printing money printing money handing it out and if, if you think unemployment insurance in Texas even though it's you know it's supposed to be for three months um, it is on par with a sixty-five or seventy thousand dollar a year salary. I mean, you can get by on unemployment insurance pretty well uh, for a bit. Um, the modern monetary theory really is, you know, like the universal basic income. Andrew Yang, you know, that that was his thing. Um, this is what Japan did. 
and it's called the Japanese debt trap. And you just keep printing and printing. The problem you have is you need to have young people. You need to keep making human beings. Oh, boy. And this is the problem. And I've spoken to bankers, you know, like real Wall Street guys. I, I know them. They're friends. And they say, oh, we have nothing to worry about in America when it comes to mon modern monetary theory. So why not? Because if we don't make enough babies, we'll just import them. Hence the border being pretty much open. Just oh, keep Jesus. people coming in. That, that's the idea. Wait, you really think that the, the reason why they leave the border porous is because we need more immigrants because they're printing more money? You need humans, literally need humans to do stuff. As our, uh, I mean, we're so not... they're calculating this in term uh, in a long game. Yeah, real. But do, don't you think that part of what they're doing is it's combined with this idea that you don't need ID to vote, and then it's also c combined with this idea that it's, uh, idea I think that's that a red herring. It, but in some places, they're saying that they want illegal aliens to be able to mm -hmm. vote. Yeah, New York, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is very strange. It's, it's like it's really odd because you're kind of encouraging people to to stay illegal if that's the case because one of the, the plus sides plus sides of uh, being involved in a, a country is you get to vote right you get mm -hmm. to you get to decide like hey I don't like this guy or right. I like that guy right like if you're not really a part of the country but you you've snuck over here mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you are a part of the country like what's the difference if you could vote? Like what? It, what separates it? Not like a, you don't really pay taxes. So are you are you being taxed? You're getting sales tax and like. But what if you're not registered? Like if you're not really uh, an American citizen, are you paying taxes? It doesn't matter. Um, I do not know a single Wall Street guy who gives a fuck about who which party is in power. They don't care. Doesn't ma care. Doesn't, doesn't matter. That, because that does not same. matter. It, it's a unit party, essentially. Right. Um, look at the military-industrial complex. You know, Republicans and, and Democrats are all for war. You know, yay! Let's go buy <sighs> some. Let's go buy some more shit.